Welcome to Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, this is gonna be cool. I've been preparing for a while on this. I've done my research and hopefully we all learned something today. I wanted to do a little old school versus new school. As you can remember, as, as you can remember, as you hopefully remember, we reviewed this Tyler uh, modern day affordable uh, shoebox cassette recorder recently. However, and I do have memories of shoebox, but they looked more like this because I'm thinking, you know, early to mid 80s, we had things more along the lines of a caliphone and things of that nature. This isn't a caliphone, this is a Radio Shack uh, TRS, or excuse me, TRS 80 compatible. I'll get to that in a minute, but this is the CCR 81 uh, shoebox vintage cassette player. And I want to do a little compare and contrast. And one of the biggest differences between these two is tape bias. And that's kind of a mystery to some people. What does it mean? How does it work? I wanted to give a very high level overview of that and also take a look at this cool player. So to compare the two a little bit, this um, is the TCP01. And by the way, if you're interested in a shoebox player to buy a new one, there's a lot of new ones that look similar to this. A lot of people said this is just a rebranded uh, GE. It's actually not. The GE is a little different than this if you look carefully, uh, but this is similar. And there's a lot of similar units, all between $29 to $59 for this quality. If you want vintage, the price is actually pretty similar uh, if you want to go down that route. So this is TCP-01, it's two-track mono. This is a CCR-81, it is also two-track mono. That means it'll play both stereo left and right tracks, but it won't represent them left and right. It'll mix them both, play them back, both on the left and right side. Uh, however, if you're listening to the speakers, to mono speakers, so it combines those two. Um, this, these can be had now uh, on eBay. They're fairly plentiful. You can find them from anywhere from $30 to $75. This is $39.95 on Amazon. And uh, so some differences here. So this one has built-in microphone and you can connect an external microphone. I'm not gonna go through all the features on this again because we already did that. If you wanna see that, I'll put a link in the description for that show. This one um, does not have a microphone. So why does this one not have a microphone? You can connect an external microphone, which we'll do here in a minute, but why would you not have a microphone? The reason is, is this is unique. This is, as you can see up close here, is a computer cassette recorder. What does that mean? Well, this was actually an accessory to the old Radio Shack TRS-80 computer of the early 80s. So you could use this tape player recorder to load programs and save programs with the computer. So it's really a tape drive, but it happens to be in the form factor and use uh, the background mechanism of a tape recorder audio or audio tape recorder machine to accomplish this. So it happens to be a, a wonderful and very heavy duty freestanding tape machine as well. And that's what I have it for. Uh, but yeah, you can actually get a cable that will allow you to connect this directly to the computer, which is pretty cool, I think. Comparison, both of them will run on four C cell batteries. This one is DC powered only. So it takes uh, a little wall wart and plugs in like that on the side. This one though, the CCR81, you can power it off of a DC power supply. You can power it off of four C cell batteries, or you can power it off of AC, and that's what we're gonna do. So, I'm gonna plug our cable in here too. There are different sizes of cables, by the way, that connect like that. Some are figure of eight, some aren't. But, uh, so we're gonna be using AC to power it. This has no tape counter, this one does. It's a little mechanical counter. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty much the same idea for our purposes. Now, before we get to talking about tape bias, which is the real main point of this, we're going to do a little audio recording. Um, again, this one has no microphones because it was intended to be, intended to be used as a uh, tape drive. So I'm going to use an external mic, this one right here. So it's a bit overkill, but it'll definitely allow us to, you know, sample the quality of the recording capabilities of each. So let's start with the Tyler. Oops, putting in an ultra mega cheapo RCA branded generic-ish tape, normal bias tape, normal position tape, excuse me. Putting in our external microphone. Both of these are gonna have an automatic recording level. 
So you're not gonna need to set or have the ability to set, depending on how you look at it. So I'm off camera using this sh shotgun mic here. So here we go. I'll wait for the leader to start there. Okay, we are recording on the Tyler cassette recorder with a uh, pretty high quality microphone, boom microphone. The sound should be pretty full. And yeah, it's a mono recording, but the quality should be good. So testing one, two, three. Go ahead and rewind and play that back. We are recording on the Tyler cassette recorder with a uh, pretty high quality microphone, boom microphone. The sound should be pretty full and yeah. Not bad. And just for comparison, I should have done this first. Let's record on the built in mic, on this little condenser mic right here. Condenser is not a bad thing, by the way. Testing one, two, three, four. In fact, a condenser microphone, I mean, this is a condenser microphone. That's not a indicator of a bad thing. Okay, so we are testing the audio quality here. This should be substantially poor compared to the other one. Okay. Let's give this a little listen. Testing one, two, three, four. In fact, a condenser microphone I mean, this is a condenser microphone. That's not a indicator of a bad thing. Okay, so we are testing the audio quality here. This should be substantially poor. It's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. For, I mean, for, depends on what you're using it for, right? If you're trying to get, you know, high quality sound, you're probably not gonna be using one of these types of shoebox players. Although I've heard that Grateful Dead concerts, they had hundreds of these lined up at the front of the stage because they allowed people to bootleg their concerts. Okay, so we are going to now use this. Interesting, I love, from a tactile standpoint, these paddle switches or piano keys, whatever you call them, have excellent tactile feedback. They just feel good, they click hard, they snap, they pop, whereas these are a little mushier. And, and even though aesthetically, it looks kind of cool that these curve down on, on this, they feel like you can't quite get the same grip. They're kind of smooth, your finger slides off. I know that's silly and it sounds small, but these have like these little grippy pad things and it just feels more like it's more of a ka-chunk with this and I like that. I've noticed that a lot of people that have these say that the lids don't stay open. Neither is there a, a guide. Like when you put the cassette over here, sorry the frame is so tight here, but you know, hold the, the lid holds the cassette, whereas this one doesn't. There's no guide in there. So you literally are putting the tape down over the pinch or over the capstan. I'm doing a terrible job. Okay, there we go. So you can see the tape in there. Ever wonder why there's a little shiny rectangular area between the spindles there? It's to create contrast to allow you to see how much tape you've got left. This one doesn't have it. Most tape players have something. That one doesn't have anything. Um, okay, so we are, again, no external or no internal mic, so we're gonna connect an external microphone and, oops, and record. Okay, we are now testing the Radio Shack Tandy CCR81. You'll notice that the record battery light now functions as sort of a VU signal detector type thing. It's not a meter, but it's a VU signal identifier. It's some sort of feedback for you to see that there's sound being recorded. It's flashing at the same rate that I'm talking. When you're on battery during playback, this will indicate that you have battery and you have good battery left. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to the comparison there. Volume knob on the Testing the Radio Shack Tandy CCR81. You'll notice that the record battery light now functions as sort of a VU signal detector type thing. It's not a meter, but it's a... So it sounds, you know, and I've noticed with the classroom products, older vintage products, the sound's a little bit punchier. It's a little bit more, how do I say, it's contrasty in a way. And again, it's not going to be something you're going to probably want to do much music recording on. Although for playback, it works just fine. Um, but yeah, interesting thing there. So I've got some really cool stuff to play for you. I've got some children's cassettes here. I've got Voltron, Defender of the Universe, Lotor, Secret Weapon. There's this great YouTube channel where they just play vintage kids tapes. I love this one because the label is upside down because that's the type of player it would probably go in. I think that's awesome. Also interesting with this guy, 
is it's the same program. It says down here in the fine print, for children's convenience, the program is repeated on both sides. But before we do this, this is the payoff. So hang in there with me. I'm gonna do a quick recap on tape bias so it'll make sense to those of you that it doesn't already make sense to. And then we'll play some cool stuff. I also got a one of a kind Kmart audio tape and some other things. So we're gonna play around with those in a minute. But beforehand, I really wanna talk about tape bias, what it is and how these two differ. It's a big difference. So when magnetic tape recording was first being developed in the earliest, earlier parts of the 20th century, uh, it, was, it was discovered that uh, ferric oxide magnetic tape, when you apply an audio signal to it directly, it actually doesn't record well because tape has something called a coercivity. And that coercivity has to be overcome in some form or fashion in order to get the audio signal to remain on the tape. Other way, otherwise, the sound decays, there's massive distortion. So you have to get the audio at a certain level above the coercivity amount or value in order to get into what's called the linear zones of magnetic tape. So that probably, I probably lost, except for those of you that have been around the block, uh, anybody that's new to tape is probably like, what the heck is he talking about? So basically there are two types of biasing. There is AC biasing, which this unit has, and there is DC biasing, which this unit has. You may be saying, oh, AC must be the old way. Not true. DC biasing is the old way. And it basically means that in order to get a good sound recording on the tape, in addition to recording sound, they have to add something to that recording. In the case of DC biasing, they add direct current. It's easy to remember DC for direct current biasing. It adds direct current. So basically, in addition to the sound you're recording, it's recording current that isn't audible. It's just current electricity been pushed onto there and in a sense and this is really oversimplifying it in a sense you are increasing at an exponential level the strength of the signal you're putting it on on the tape by putting direct current in there with the audio signal that forces the audio into the linear zone overcomes the coercivity of the tape and allows you to make a tape record a tape recording that works and this is the original technology that was developed way back in the day. Now, 1920s and 30s come along, and a lot of people, scientists, engineers around the world, developing magnetic tape and trying to improve on it, realize that there's a better way to do biasing, and that's through alternating current biasing, AC biasing. And AC biasing is kind of similar, but instead of putting current in with the audio signal, it adds an inaudible audio frequency. So the easy way to remember it is AC biasing adds audio, A for audio. It's actually A for alternating current, but audio for AC biasing adds inaudible audio to that recorded signal in order to get a quality recording on tape. DC adds current, direct current. So why does the older machine have the newer technology? It's cheaper to do this. <laughs> It's cheaper. And actually, once they developed and adopted AC biasing early on, like we're talking like 40s, 50s, 60s, DC current was ancient history until people that are making entry-level products, affordable products, realized it was really cheap to do. Um, so that's why these are doing it again. So the quality level isn't going to be as high. So AC biasing is a higher quality. And you're going to find it on almost everything made prior to, you know, probably... 20 years ago. But that's something that you can see in the specifications. Both work, and both of them make recordings that are compatible on either machine. How does that work? Okay, and this is the last bit on biasing, and then we'll move on. So in AC biasing, when it is recording the signal, it adds a um, inaudible audio current that is 10 times more powerful at a minimum than the, the audio current being recorded onto it. So 10 times inaudible, and then that frequency in that zone decays as soon as it leaves the record head. So what happens is the extra signal you add to it in order to get a good recording immediately decays, falls off, strips off, and leaves nothing but the sound on the tape. And then similar things, similar properties happen with DC. So at the end of the day, either produces 
just audio on the tape. You're not left with current. You're not left with the inaudible frequencies because they both come off. Okay, that's it on biasing. If you're still there, thank you for hanging in there, guys. We're almost 12 minutes in on this video, and I really appreciate it. I'm trying to change up the angle. I'm trying to change it up, guys. I apologize. This one's kind of a, a lengthy one. I don't want to make it a tome. Okay, we're going to have some fun here. Let's focus on the, uh, on the Radio Shack uh, computer cassette recorder. Let's listen to... This is a great, great cassette tape. So let's listen to a little bit of this. This is early 80s at its best, mid-80s. Just enjoy this stuff. And we won't get copyright hated on it so we can listen to it as long as we want. I won't play the whole thing, but. This is the story of Lotor's secret weapon. Did you hear that? How you could hear it before it started? <laughs> That's because it was basically, it, because it's older tape, it's been in storage, it's literally printed through, it's called print through. So you could hear like an echo of the sound coming up one rotation before it got there. On the planet Doom, King Zarkon was meeting with his son, Prince Lotor. Zarkon was not pleased. I've had enough of your failures, Lotor. Quit sending robots to destroy Voltron. I want you personally to lead our troops to victory. You mean really lead from up front? Of course, a prince doesn't lead from the rear. Now go and plan your attack. I love that sound. Desperate for help, Lotor went to Hagar the Witch. She led him to a bubbling tank. No, Joe, I think you don't like it. I love the, in a, in a future life, I just want to do the voices to this stuff. Lotor, Lotor came to Voltron, and Voltron went to Lotor, and Lotor had a blowtor. It was just great, I love this stuff. Okay, let's listen to this one. I just love this stuff. What they say, Hagar the Witch, something like that? It's good stuff, okay. Our new homeland. We were afraid and acted without thinking. We are sorry. We understand. And I think we can work it out so all our people can live in harmony. Together, Justice Leaguers and aliens rose to the moon's surface. Wonder Woman pointed to the remains of Moonbase Peace. You can help us rebuild Moonbase Peace away from your underground city. Again, if you like this stuff, which if you're a child of the 80s and 90s as am I, this is instantly cool. This is very, very cool. Um, there's YouTube, there are YouTube channels out there and they post just these tapes and they're great to listen to. They're so, they would come in Happy Meals. You would, could buy them. They would come with toys. They would come with books. A couple other quick things on the subject of tapes. I made this. This is a Kmart background music loop. It's just totally fake. <laughs> I literally had some really crappy, I don't know if these are Telex brand tapes, some kind of cheap, it doesn't even have a window, it's literally just plastic cutouts, it's some of the cheapest tape. By the way, gross generalization alert, when you're looking at tape media, okay, see the color of the oxide there, see how it's lighter? Typically lighter tape indicates cheaper tape. Um, now we're not even talking about different types of tape, right, we're not talking about um, shoot, I got to fast forward right here. What am I doing? I'm not even talking about metal. I'm not talking about chrome. I'm just talking about the uh, mixtures itself. The darker, the better. And I picked a terrible example of that. So, in this case, there we go. In this case, you can see the tape on the left is actually probably a higher quality blend. Oh, because I was comparing it to this. Okay, cool. Sorry. So yeah, see how that's darker on the left? Typically darker is better. If you look at a chrome or metal tape, they're almost pitch black. So, all right, guys, hit me up on the comments about how I'm wrong about that one. Um, okay, so anyway, this background music tape, I took some uh, materials available for free on archive.org and uh, actually recorded from Kmart reel-to-reel -reel background audio. And I made this tape. So this is authentic Kmart background music, and I just think it's awesome. So. Christmas. Kind of like Seabird type of stuff. I love it. By the way, check out this cassette case. <laughs> I know I'm talking about cassette case. I've never seen one like this. It's got an indent here. 
for this part of the tape, see you actually put it in this way and it is super sleek. I have never seen one like that. I think that's super cool. And then finally, um, the last thing I wanna show you here, this is one of those movie audio tapes I'm always telling you guys I make. So I record audio for movies. This is from one of my favorites, The Far Country. And it's literally just the movie sound. Good. It's a western. You owe these fellas $200 for the drive. Pay them off. T-Rex, $200. Well, Tom, he's 100 for you and 100 for you, Joe. Here are your guns. I love that stuff. Old Jimmy Stewart. Ah, yeah. Don't mess with Jim. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks for hanging through um, the speech about biasing. These are cool units. I like them both. I do like the black look of this. It's super light. This is, I actually had it written down. This is like a pound, I think, and this is two and a half. This thing feels like quad. It's heavy. There's metal parts in here. It's super heavy. And the handle is metal. It's rugged. I don't think this one, I don't think this one will last as long as this one has, honestly. Um, but both gets the job done. And it's cool to have a shoebox player. It's just cool to have. I mean, for making quick and dirty recordings, for playing back tapes, they don't do anything else. There's no radio. There's no nothing. Although some of the newer ones, I guess, have Bluetooth, which is kind of weird. This one does not. Um, but yeah, it's just a quick and dirty way to make recordings, have a microphone built in. On this newer ones. I'll put some links for some newer ones. You guys can check them out if you're interested. So anyway, it's a longer show. I appreciate you guys hanging in there if you did. Uh, but stay tuned throughout the week. We got some cool stuff coming your way. And I am excited to share some new news with you and some new products and some new just kind of cool things we're gonna review. We got some shipments in recently of some awesome stuff, very, very unique stuff. So I'm excited to share that with you. But that's gonna do it for today, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.